Welcome back. All right, so we're going to talk about defensemen now. Uh, the Norris Trophy and the fact that Roman Yossi ends up finishing second in the overall vote, even though he had more first place votes. So I'm wearing Nashville because I'm guaranteed to be winning either Colorado or Tampa later tonight. Stanley Cup game, Stanley Cup final game four is tonight. So I figured I'd wear Nashville for Yossi, who had 98 first place votes to the 92 for Kale McCarr. But McCarr had 98 second place votes. Yossi had 76. Then in third place, McCarr, five votes. Yossi 17 and in fourth place Yossi had three votes there. So 1606 is the total point total for, total points for Yossi and for Makar 1631. So it's as close as you get. Uh, you swap out a couple of votes for Makar, you give more love to Hedman and suddenly Roman Yossi wins the trophy. Now Yossi won it before, so did Hedman, so Makar gets his first kick at the can uh, for Hedman. Uh, four first place votes for him, 14 second place, 142 third place votes. 30 voters had him in fourth place, and there were two that had him in fifth place, which is crazy to me. Um, 940 points overall, and again, if I was saying who I think is the best overall defenseman in the league, Hedman would have been number one every single year. This year, Makar and Yossi do have me considering whether or not that works. But this is where the argument comes in. Are these truly the three best defensemen in the La in the National Hockey League at playing the defensive role? And are we still enamored by points, which is taking away attention from really good defensive defensemen who don't really have an award for them, right? So number one scoring defenseman is Yossi. Number two scoring defenseman is McCarr. Number three scoring defenseman is Hedman. And that's in the entire National Hockey League. So again... If, if you want to have this argument, we absolutely can because there does seem to be a bias towards defensemen who score the most points. So, uh, in the scoring department, Makar does score the most goals. Uh, 28 goals, 58 assists, 86 points in 77 games. So, if he'd played all 82, he probably hits 30 goals. Uh, for Yossi, 23 goals, 73 assists, 96 points. And it looked like he was a shoe in for 100 points. Uh, but April, he slowed down by his standard to only 15 points in 15 games. Uh, after an insane March. 28 points in 14 games. Absolutely ridiculous. And then for Hedman, he had a really good April. 21 points in 16 games for Hedman. He ends up with 20 goals, 65 assists, 85 points. Played all 82 games. And in most normal seasons, I would think Hedman probably runs away with it. But Makar and Yossi, the stats they put up, uh, they end up being ahead of him in the vote. The one thing is, you can point to a monster, monster month for uh, Yossi. Uh, you can see that the 21 points in 16 games for Hedman, that's just an absolutely remarkable total. Pretty consistent numbers from McCarr across the board. McCarr was pretty excellent game one through a game 82. And <clears throat> while his totals were better in March than they were in April, they're still pretty darn good overall. Uh, if you look at average ice time, these guys are close there too. 25 minutes and 40 seconds on average for McCarr. 25 minutes and 33 seconds on average for Yossi. 25 minutes and 5 seconds on average for Victor Hedman. Uh, they both play on the power play. Pretty sure they both kill penalties as well with those kinds of totals. And if you look at the physical play, well, they're able to do that too. 95 hits for Makar. Um, anytime I see anybody say Makar's a one-way defenseman or it's all offense, uh, my first thought is I, I don't think they're watching his game. He's very impressive in his own zone as well. As is Yossi. Uh, 66 hits for Yossi. 93 hits for Hedman. We know Hedman's a great all-around defenseman. And the hitting's there. If you look at block shots, there were 110 by Makar, 133 by Yossi, and 129 by Hedman. So those are totals that Tortorella would be very happy with. Uh, this is a league that definitely has leaned towards the idea of more and more shot blocks being better. Um, it, it is remarkable. And if, if you're not a defenseman willing to block shots, you, you may not play very much. Uh, now, if we look at the takeaway giveaway, so this is, and this is where the arguments come in, because you may have a bad takeaway giveaway ratio, depending on how dangerous the opportunities are, depending on your, your matchups, you might have a tougher matchup than somebody else. So if you're always playing against top-notch players, you may end up with more giveaways. But the takeaway giveaway, the only one with a positive is Makar. He's 49 to 40 in favor of takeaways. Giveaways... Yossi had 71 uh, to 48 takeaways. On the Hedman front, he was close. 52 takeaways, 56 giveaways. So if you're looking at it from that perspective, Makar wins on that total, right? 
and he has the most hits. Average time on ice, he's he's number one in that. He's number two in points, but he's number one in goals. Uh, so it, it it is close. It is remarkably close. Uh, he is the winner in 2022. Here's where it gets interesting, too. Yossi wins it in 2020. In 2018, it was Hedman. Hedman still hasn't won another uh, Norris. It is bizarre. I, I'm surprised he only has the one Norris trophy. Hedman already has like an, a, a Hall of Fame level career. I would argue Yossi's getting there as well. Um, Makar, I don't think it's going to take him very long either. But it is interesting because of the top five in voting, McAvoy being number four, he was 11th in scoring among def amongst defensemen. He's kind of the exception to the rule. And I, I agree with McAvoy getting all the love he did. He did get one first place vote. I would love to know what that voter um, put him at number one for and why they would view McAvoy ahead of, uh, as being ahead of Makar, Yossi, Hedman, and even Fox. Fox ends up fifth place this year, uh, but he was fourth in scoring among defensemen. So the top four scoring defensemen end up being all their your top five. Uh, and the one that's that's the outlier is McAvoy, who was 11th in scoring, which is not slouch when it comes to scoring among defensemen. And so it, it is one of those interesting awards. It is hard to qualify what your best defenseman is. And, of course, it means that for defensive defensemen who might be excellent, and, of course, Jacob Slavin's a name I bring up a lot, but there are a lot of other very good defensive defensemen in the league. And so because of the, the monster seasons these guys put up, it kind of shuts them out. Uh, we have the Selkie up front. Should we have a Selkie-level defenseman award? I've seen it, and I mean, I've called it the Langway. I've seen others call it the Rod Langway Award as well. Because Rod Langway was a completely unique defenseman at a time when there really wasn't a lot of defense being played in the NHL. Langway was all defense, and he was very, very good at it. Uh, and and at, again, this was at a time where, I mean, defense was optional. You did not have the structure you have now, uh, but Langway was remarkable. So do we need that award? Are we at that stage? Or is this fine? And again, are, are you of the belief that Yossi, uh, with the most first place votes, is that a shame that he doesn't end up beating out Makar? Uh, again, if I'd had a vote, I, I don't think I would have made anybody happy either because it would have been one, two, three. I probably would have had Fox as fourth. I'm not sure who I would have had in fifth, but I, I likely would have had Fox in fourth place. on. So I, I would have been just as bad as everybody else. I would have had the top four defensemen as the top four for the Norris. And I, I don't know uh, how much that helps. But it, again, the argument gets made about whether or not we should have the vote after the first round of the playoffs. I talked about that in the last video. I don't think that ever happens. I understand why people feel that way. I've made the argument both for and against making the vote happen during the playoffs. But the regular season is the regular season. The playoffs are the playoffs. The one argument that I heard yesterday too, though, why do we only have one award for the playoffs? Shouldn't there be playoff awards? Shouldn't there be three or four different awards for the playoffs? My answer to that is, yeah, probably we should. Uh, most tournaments you see internationally, they have more than just the one award. So it would make a lot of sense for the NHL to look at expanding which awards. Maybe have your Norris Trophy winner here and then have a best defenseman in the playoffs as well. So, I mean, that wouldn't help Yossi, but if... Tampa Bay ended up winning the Stanley Cup. Maybe Hedman wins there, that kind of thing. And it might make for some interesting picks that we might then be looking and going, okay, McCarr wins the Norris, but the best defenseman for the playoffs was Hedman. Let's discuss. But again, that's just pie in the sky. I don't know that that necessarily changes either. We've had just the Conn Smythe Trophy seemingly forever. So I don't know if the NHL has an appetite to add as many awards as we think they should. Um, the, I mean, they, they do like three hour award shows. They like to bloat and, and make the award shows go as long as possible. Why not have extra awards so that we as fans would look and, and have a lot more interest uh, rather than some of the segments they have on the award show, which can be not fantastic. But anyways, there you go. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Who would you have voted for, for the Norris Trophy this year? Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through, you just happened upon this video. And another question, so how many awards does Makar end up winning? What about Yossi? Does he win another? Does Hedman finally get another next year? Or with the, the, the playoff runs that Tampa Bay's gone on and the amount of time that Hedman's put in in all these runs, does that lead to 
Um, him still being a very good defenseman, but does it make him less dominant? Does all of that mileage add up? Let me know your thoughts. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And hey, thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.